Welcome back to Health Report. Preeclampsia is a leading cause of complications and even death amongst pregnant women in Australia. It's the country's most common serious medical disorder in pregnancy, affecting 5 to 10 per cent of expectant mothers. Yet the causes of this illness remain a mystery and apart from delivering the baby, there's no known cure. The good news is researchers in Sydney have made a scientific breakthrough which reinforces the theory that preeclampsia may involve the rejection of the fetus by its mother's immune system. For more on this, we're joined now by Professor Barbara Fazekas from the Centenary Institute. Barbara, thanks for coming in. Let's start with the basics. What is preeclampsia? How do you get it? Well, it, it arrives in pregnancy um, and what we're interested in is why. But what happens is basically mothers develop high blood pressure. Mm -hmm and they tend to also develop an, a series of other problems with kidneys, liver, neurological function, um, problems in blood clotting, so it involves a lot of systems and it can become very severe. Uh, and at that point we really don't have effective treatments if we can't get the blood pressure under control, then the baby has to be delivered. And so the difficulty is if this is early in the pregnancy, we may lose the baby, the baby may be born prematurely and may therefore have health problems later in life. So it can be a very serious condition. But if, of course, the baby isn't delivered prematurely, then the life of the baby in any case, and indeed the mother, can be threatened. That's right. And that is what used to happen before we knew what to do. Do tell us about this scientific breakthrough. I understand it centres around regulatory T cells. T -cells. What, what are these? Regulatory T cells are a very small population of circulating lymphocytes, the, t the, the cells that protect you against infection. And this is a particular special subset that actually keeps all the other subsets under control. So it basically sets the balance in the immune system. And it's very important just in normal life to, to stop your immune system from getting out of hand and causing a lot of inflammatory diseases. Now in pregnancy, what we discovered is that in a normal pregnancy, there's a big increase in these regulatory cells. And there's also a decrease in the inflammatory cells. So the ratio between them changes very markedly. When we looked at women with preeclampsia, we didn't see that change. Mm. So that's a very profound immunological difference between the normal pregnancy and the preeclampsia. And I think that suggested to us that in fact there is an, a, an immunological basis to this condition. Now that you know a bit about what's happening within the immune system, what does this mean for treatment? I think currently we need a little more data before we can change the treatment. What we need to find out is when this change happens during pregnancy. And I guess the first thing probably will be can we use this to actually predict who will get preeclampsia because early treatment is always better than later treatment. And the other thing then is to begin to understand what causes the shift in normal women and what goes wrong in preeclampsia. Once we understand that, of course, then we can design really specific therapies to prevent this from happening. It's a tough one, isn't it, because you really had nowhere to start. I mean, is there any type of woman that is more likely to get preeclampsia than others, or is it just completely random? There are a few predisposing factors, but most of the cases you couldn't predict, no. So, in fact, it, for all intents and purposes, for most women, it's simply something that happens and, and until now we didn't know why. And Now we know it has an immune basis. We still don't know why it went wrong in those women. Or, but it gives us a big lead in going on to further research to try and work out what actually happened. One scientific leap at a time, I guess. So usually, as we mentioned, preeclampsia, blood pressure issues, treated with yes. blood pressure medication. That's right, yes. Generally speaking, just how effective is that? Look, it depends how severe the condition is. Um, sometimes that's enough to get through to full term. Sometimes it just can't keep it under control. So it really depends on the severity of the, of the underlying disease, whether it's effective or not. Why do you think the causes of, of preeclampsia have been such a mystery? Well, certainly if, if the immunological problem that we're defining uh, it really is the basis we didn't have techniques to measure any of these cells until within the last few years, very recently. In fact, the, the definition of the regulatory T cells that we're using in humans, we only discovered, um, well, we published it in 2006. So it's a relatively recent um, and the onset uh, of just knowing mm. how to do this. The inflammatory cells, in fact, were discovered even more recently. So we really haven't had the tools until recently to actually get to the bottom of this. 
Does the age of the woman have anything to do with this? It has some influence, but it can affect women at, of childbearing any age, really. So, so what's the end hope? I, I assume it's, well, prevention always better than yes, cure, of course, yes. but once you sort out what's causing it, working out the most effective way to treating it, but then the next step, of course, how to stop it happening in the first place. I think if we really understand what makes that change in normal pregnancy and why it's not happening in preeclampsia, then we'll just be able to intervene and change that. That's what we're hoping to do. So that will, in fact, get the regulation of the immune system in preeclampsia back to the way it should be. And that's obviously what we're aiming to do. So that really would be a cure, I think. So it, it affects 5 to 10 per cent of expectant mothers in mm -hmm. Australia. Are our statistics any different, any worse than the other countries? Um, is the Western world any different? From I, don't, I don't believe so, but that's mm. not something I'm an expert on. Certainly our treatment is very good. I think we do as well as anywhere mm. in the world in terms of treating this. And, and if it really has to go to um, a premature delivery, then our, our means of looking after the baby and the mother are mm. absolutely as good as they could be. But I don't believe that the rate is actually particularly different in different countries around the world. Yeah, well, still so much to learn. Uh, Barbara Fazekas from the Centenary Institute, thanks so much for thanks, all of the insight you've given us on this uh, particular issue, and um, we do hope you make great strides in the future. Thank thanks, you so much. Amanda.